While the universe is still waiting for the stars to align for the righteous boobage producer Kenichiro Takaki to finish what he can with Senran Kagura 7, in the meantime he's been working on a different project simultaneously, Kandakawa Jet Girls. Kandagawa Jet Girls is ultimately a mixed media project as not only did it spawn a game, but an anime as well, and the result of the entire thing is kinda, well, mixed. As this is a review of the game, this review will only be focusing on that aspect alone. The series is set in a fictional world where jet ski races are all the rage. These races are done in a way in which it takes two people on one jet ski to take part in a race. The person in the front focuses on strictly racing, and the person in the back is defending and attacking other racers with their water-based weaponry. Now, how this correlates to gameplay is pretty simple. Like with most racing games these days, you have your drive and brake and reverse buttons as your shoulder buttons. From there, all of the face buttons do something different. You have a button to shoot your primary weapon, another to shoot your secondary weapon, another for a speed boost, and another to use your special attack. Depending on how you tilt your left analog stick, you can also sacrifice speed for control, or vice versa. You can also tilt your analog stick to shoot behind you as well, and if you do this, the game will course correct for you, so you don't have to worry about driving into a wall or something. When you initially boot up the tutorial, it honestly does feel like a lot to take in, but after a few races, everything comes together pretty cleanly. However, there is one big problem. The controls are, well, bluntly speaking, pretty bad. Now that's not necessarily to knock against the game, but the fact of the matter is, we're using jet skis to race. So while we are racing on water, things like turning and drifting isn't the most, uh, fluid thing in the world. When it comes to the races themselves, this is your typical kart-based racer, but with jet skis instead. As mentioned previously, you have your main weapon and a secondary weapon. The secondary weapon comes to you via the item box. There is also a gauge that increases as you do tricks, go through the rings, drift, and etc. Once the gauge reaches 100%, you can do a special attack that's based on your secondary weapon that you're currently holding. Alternatively, you can just turbo your way through when you're at variables of 20%. The game only has a handful of tracks, and it tries to bury that fact by giving each of them three different routes. While that makes the less than dozen tracks turn into a couple dozen tracks, it honestly feels like there's only a couple of unique ones throughout the game. Like, I'd honestly feel much better if the tracks transformed throughout each lap, or something like that, but sadly, it doesn't. Outside of that, if you don't want to spend the three to five minutes it takes to do a race, feel free to try out its minigames. Naturally, the higher the difficulty, the more money you'll receive to spend in shops to buy customizations for yourself and your jet skis. The four minigames are very quick. In one of them, it's a QTE-a-thon, another is to move the left stick left and right to not hit any of the cones in the way, the third is to catch the hearts that are falling onto a treadmill, and the last one is to simply do tricks to your heart's content. They're all alright in their own way. But that said, if you aren't good at timing your button mashes for any reason, you're gonna have a long 45 seconds ahead of you. The main protagonists are the Asakusa Girl High School duo, Ren Namaki and Misa Aoi, which is the same protagonist as the anime. So technically, if you've already seen the anime already, you can skip their story modes, do the races, and unlock the other story modes. That said, they honestly aren't all that interesting, and are kind of cardboard cutout characters, and the tiny bits and pieces of dialogue can only do so much to flesh everyone out. What's funny is that while the anime doesn't mind going all in in regards to some of the ecchi content, the game is very, very tame in that regard. Sure, everyone is, uh, decked out, and there's a typical dressing room shenanigans, but that's it. There's no closing destruction or anything like its previous games. Sure, you can blame a certain someone all you'd like, but considering it's been how long and we're still waiting on Sinran Kagura 7, the, this game was probably made this way from the beginning. I played this game on PC using an 8700K and 16GB of RAM and a stock 1070. The game ran perfectly fine at 1600p and 60 frames per second. Now if you want to go full 4K maximum everything, my PC was able to handle that pretty well in everything but races and the shops. Because I have the game stored on an external hard drive, I can't really say if it was a bizarre asset streaming issue when browsing the shops to buy a new item or not, but once the item loaded, the game continued to run just fine. As for races, you know, the important part, well, it, it fluctuates between 45 and 60 frames per second. Keep in mind, though, it really just depends on how many CPUs are in the vicinity, because the moment I had a good enough lead, while I wasn't at a locked 60 frames per second, I was definitely floating around the mid-50s. 
While performance isn't an issue, do note that you may want to mess around with the launch config tools. Otherwise, if it was like me, the game may launch at 720p in full-blown Japanese. This is a glitch that will more than likely be patched out. Also, don't forget to turn on subtitles. All in all, is this game recommendable? Honestly, maybe. This is unfortunately something where you're going to have to find someone who has the game already so you can have the means to play it if you want something that's a bit more challenging beyond the story mode. Controlling the jet skis aside, the game is okay for me. I'll even go as far as to say it's one of the better games that Takaki has produced since the Senran Kagura Brigade showed up. This game, in its own right, is kinda unique, but personally, I just don't like how the jet skis handle on a fundamental level. And that does it for our review of Kandagawa Jet Girls. If you have any comments or questions about the game or the review, by all means, leave them down in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you guys on this. Also, let us know if you plan on picking up this game yourselves, too. And if you're new to my channel, find me out for the first time through this review. Hey, be sure to subscribe for future reviews, commentaries, let's plays, and more. And I'd like to thank all the current people on screen right now for supporting me on Patreon. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching.